information, go to tcm.com slash festival. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us this afternoon on TCM. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. If you love rip-roaring adventures from Hollywood's golden era, you're obligated to love Errol Flynn, the king of the big screen swashbuckler in the late 1930s and 40s. Flynn spent most of his career with the studio that originally signed him in 1934, that was Warner Brothers. By the end of the 1940s, Flynn's off-screen antics were catching up to him and his popularity was beginning to fade. His best roles during the 40s came on loan outs to other studios and up next we have an example of that. From MGM in 1951, it's Kim. The story is adapted from a Rudyard Kipling adventure set in 19th century colonial India. The movie follows a young orphan played by Dean Stockwell as he gets mixed up in a British intelligence operation with Paul Lucas as a philosophical llama and Flynn as an Afghan horse trader who doubles as a British agent. MGM gave Flynn a choice between making Kim, which would be partially shot on location in India, or going to Africa to make King Solomon's mines. Flynn chose the all-expenses-paid trip to India, leaving Stuart Granger to cozy up to Deborah Carr in Africa. The script for Kim had been at MGM for years before the film finally got on track. It was set to go in 1938, but when World War II began the next year, production was shut down. After the war, MGM started making plans to shoot the film again, but MGM soon learned the political climate in India was far too dangerous, particularly since the story's imperialist implications would be offensive to millions of Indians. But once Indian independence came in 1947, MGM thought it was finally safe to launch the production and shoot key scenes in country. From director Victor Seville in 1951, here's Kim. <laughs> 